So the pet chicken, one of the pets of the future, with climate change, limited resources, getting back to nature, getting away from technology, a humble chicken is probably one of the pets of the future. There's a resurgence in pet chickens, and we're seeing more and more presented at least to our clinic every day. We probably see two to three chickens every single day. It's the most popular pet bird presented to our avian veterinary clinic. And people tell us about the wonderful personalities, the way it adds to their life. On top of it, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, but um, people are getting what we'd call cruelty-free eggs. Um, especially when you've got certain heritage breeds or breeds like we have here that um, don't lay an egg a day. They lay an egg every couple of days or for seasonal. So they're not laying their whole life. But pet chickens are amazing. Our recommendation would be definitely at least bringing one member in the flock to the vet for a visit is really important. I'll go through just a few things that you need to know before you buy your chicken. Probably the single most devastating disease that we see, bar none, is something called Marek's disease. Marek's is a herpes viral disease. It's a gamma herpes viral disease. And... Uh, most chickens get exposed to it and uh, once they get exposed to it, it's a long disease so it takes a few months up to up to a year or two and they get neurological diseases and invariably die most chickens will mount an immunity but when you buy purebred birds they're normally not vaccinated now just what why are you listening to this video you can vaccinate Marek's disease comes in thousands so you have to buy a thousand doses so even if you're vaccinating one or a hundred, it costs the same in vaccination cost. But be aware that once they've been exposed to Marek's virus, the vaccine is ineffective. So any new bird that's never been exposed can be vaccinated, and usually only a single vaccination. So Marex is number one. When you're buying your bird, if I would I would suggest you if you're buying it for pets, I would suggest that they've had a Marex vaccination as your number one. Number two, there are many parasitic diseases that are really, really common and easily get, easily get out of control in chickens. The first one, which seems to be relatively unknown because we ask owners when they come in and they've never heard of it, but it's coccidiosis. Coccidia is a parasite, pretty much the best analogy I can give is worms. It's the same kind of thing and it has the same cycle. So they pass, this parasite lives in the intestines damages the intestines, they get blood in the stool. So when you bring your pet chicken in, we take a poo sample, we do a special test looking for coxy. And in all commercial, most commercial chicken feeds will have anti coccidiostat in them already. The second thing we worry about in chickens are worms. So when you bring your pet chicken in with that same poo sample, we look for worm eggs. The next thing you've got to be aware of is um, how you're housing them home, the coop, how you set it up. It's beyond the scope of this short video, but you need you need something that's comfortable. Really, 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 really important is safe from foxes. I mean, obviously all predators, but fox attacks are probably the biggest cause of chicken losses that we see in, in healthy chickens. And it's devastating because they, they, they usually kill more than they need. And your animals are decapitated. It's very sad. So be sure not only is it safe from foxes, but you've gone underground a bit. Remember, the fox is an opportunistic predator. It's going to try and get the chickens. And he'll spend the whole day trying. So if you've got foxes in your area, be very aware. It's, you've been, you just need to be on notice. The next thing that you've got to worry about, which people underestimate completely, is biting, biting mites, lice, and insects. You know, we don't seem to realize when we get into bed at night and we cuddle and tucked in that there's often a flurry or often lots of insects attacking and biting our birds. And on these little birds, the only place an insect can really bite is going to be the, um, the comb around the eyes here, the wattle. You can maybe even see little scabs and things. You can see little scabs there. So be aware that this is always an issue. And in summer, when there's lots of insects around, you know, you, you don't go outside and spray an insecticidal spray. These guys, when they get sleeping at night, will get bitten a lot. And we don't have pox virus, but we have pox virus outbreaks. Then you kind of see how many mosquitoes are biting because you get a big pox each time it bites. So those are the three things you would really look at. Worms, coxie, and internal external parasites. 
So you treat your birds with a, with a mite and lice spray. You should be doing that arguably monthly, depending on where you are. And you would also just spray the perch or the roost where they roost on. And it has a residual action. You don't need to repeat it. I'm not sure that this is the only product, but um, you can get products that contain um, insecticide or insecticides. And this is something we just use here occasionally. But the idea is that it's, um, it's a promethorin product. But you can protect um, insects. Put at the same time, if you wanted to put something on their comb and their wattle, but uh, this shouldn't go in the eyes. So you've got to be careful. The spray with the spray, insecticide the spray shouldn't go in the eyes. Obviously, when they come in, we examine lots of things. We'll be examining the second most common things chickens get as a disease is, is respiratory disease. You probably don't have to have them vaccinated for it, but commercial poultry will be vaccinated for it. So mycoplasma is number one. And there's a whole gamut of other ones, from tracheitis to pasturella to coraza, etc. But when we get your birds in, we try and um, evaluate them. We have a lot, I'm, I'm going to leave diseases for now. So, marix, respiratory, parasitic um, are the common ones you get. The next broad group will be female chickens that are lying, is female reproductive tract disease. Absolute. One of the curses of, of a chicken is it's got to lay an egg every day, especially an eyes of brown or a leghorn. And it really sucks it out of them. It sucks out their system. Each time that, each time that incredible, miraculous egg with 30, you know, 35 grams, it's got this shell of calcium that, you know, we throw the egg out. But it's incredible that calcium is coming out the bones and uh, the protein from the blood. So it really wears them out. So we see a lot of problems. The analogy I'd use if you haven't given birth the whole time to kids, or if you've got a hospital where humans are giving birth, if you, if every now and then there's a problem. So we see eggs getting stuck, eggs getting uterus infections, ectopic ovulation, which means they ovulate internally, and all these things are problems. So we, if you get them to us early, we can address all these things really well. And one of the things that restores my faith in humanity quite a lot is that we've got a lot of clients who... Um, keep their, their chickens on contraceptive injections. So they're not registered for chickens, but we have a contraceptive injection. We inject, we inject it the same as a human contraceptive. It gets injected in the shoulder blades, and it stops them laying for three to four months usually. And it's very successful, it works well, and it gives them a break. And that's how we treat reproductive disease, uterus disease. We generally don't, we generally don't do hysterectomies in chickens simply because it's so hard to stop ovulation. So if you do a hysterectomy, potentially they could ovulate, and if they ovulate, it's very different to mammalian ovulation. The mammals ovulate the tiniest egg. I mean, it's got half the genetic material it needs. And uh, it's nothing. If it ovulates in turn, it's generally not important. But a chicken ovulates a yolk. It's a massive, big thing with that material in it. So if they ovulate internally, it's going to go into the tummy and cause problems. So we don't do hysterectomies, and we can't take the ovaries out of chickens. It's surgically too difficult. So we, we put them on contraception, but the contraceptions are really expensive. And to keep a chicken from laying is like $300 a year in contraceptive fees. So it's quite expensive. Next thing to get onto would be um, companionship. Chickens love companionship. They don't do well alone. If you have a single pet chicken, we'd recommend you buy a chicken nappy, which I can, I'll just pull one out of the drawer here. Our chicken clothes, this is what a chicken nappy looks like. It simply goes around the chicken, and then you can have it indoors with you, running around the house, playing in no poo anywhere, and you just, uh, you might have two, or you just change the nappy. Um, but if you have multiple chickens, be aware that they need they need companionship, but they also have a pecking order. And it's hard to have that balance between love, like these three, even though they're different breeds, they just get on beautifully together. You can see them comfortable together, relaxed together, but you've got to be aware as an owner that the pecking order exists and that the dominant bird will always get access to everything, even though they need each other. So chickens can add an incredible flavor to, a, to an Australian backyard, they're brilliant. We would obviously much prefer, unless you're rescuing birds, if you're going to buy them, we'd much prefer you bought heritage breeds. Um, 
I asked the guy at the CSR and he said the Langshan breed is one of the best for the Australian backyard. We don't see many of them, in fact we hardly ever see them. So I'm going to say based on this professor who's really researched it, maybe that's a breed you think about. But there are tons of beautiful heritage breeds that don't lay every day. And they, <coughs> they, they add an incredible dimension. They're safe, they're friendly uh, and they're just a wonderful pet. We see the beautiful personalities. Um, we might actually add just a few pictures, but we do have wheelchairs where chickens get, uh, where we do surgeries and someone's going in a wheelchair. The last thing I'd like to say is that if you're in a property that's over 70 years old, even over 50 years old, the chance of having high lead is a real problem. And lead, lead levels in, in the chicken means that you're getting potentially high lead, high lead in the eggs, and that can also be a problem. So they are just the most wonderful um, species. Should you quarantine a new chicken? The answer is yes, you probably should. When a new chicken arrives, even if it does have disease, there's a lot of things that they might carry. But really worms and coccidia, there's chlamydia, there's uh, these different marics. And, because even, even the ones that have recovered, if, they, if they've had marics and recovered, they'll bring in these new diseases into your flock. The biggest problem we have is microplasmas. You get one or two new chickens. For any of you watching here, this is going to happen. This happens all the time. You bring a few baby chickens in, they bring this microplasma, and the whole flock starts coughing and gurgling. And unless you treat it, you'll actually get deaths. So the, rec the recommendation might be what I probably suggest you bring young birds in. It may even be worth treating the flock with micro for microplasma. I want to just, another thing that's really important, we've got a whole set of meds in this clinic that are registered with the government for treating egg-laying chickens with no restrictions. So we can actually give your chicken an antibody for respiratory disease. We can treat your chicken for worms. We can treat your chicken for coccidia. And you don't have to lose one egg. Not one egg has to be lost. You can still eat them and it's completely safe. What we'd recommend, if there is an egg that you're not eating, we can recommend you might boil it and crush and just feed it back to them. Because um, many owners have told me that, if I say, what is the chicken's favorite food? It happens to be an egg. Maybe there's such a desire to get back where they've just given out their body that um, they really like eggs. Remember when you're feeding a chicken, they miraculous producers. You know, throwing a little bit of seed and getting this calcium egg with protein is pretty miraculous. But we want you to say, this is a, this is a time when you don't feed an organic mix necessarily. You don't feed backyard scraps as the diet. You feed a commercial laying mix that's got all the calcium, all the protein and everything. And then obviously we'd love you to supplement it. Being a vet, I don't keep their chickens, but people tell me how much they love tomatoes or tomatoes. They tell me how they love watermelon. You know, a lot of people take cauliflower or um, cabbage and they hang it up in a board and they jump up and play with it. Um, they can play. We're going to, you know, we work with Mel. Mel Vincent works with us. She's an animal behaviorist trainer. And we can, we have done chicken classes. They're brilliant. They're easy to tame. They're intelligent. Way beyond what people expect. Just because you buy them in a supermarket doesn't take away the beauty, the intelligence, the little souls they have. I mean, Mel, these three beauties. So we hope to see you with your birds and we hope to keep them healthy. Although the longevity is 10, egg-laying birds usually don't make it, especially eyes of browns and uh, heavy egg layers. It just takes it out of them. So we enjoy treating you. We love having chickens. This clinic's designed for chickens. We have a large chicken run outside that chickens get put out every day. We have really large incubators. So uh, sick chickens can be kept at the appropriate temperatures. Um, we probably do more surgery on pet chickens, more like a big surgery, than we do on any other species. And uh, they're just a great species.